Welcome back to They Reminisce Over You. I'm Christina. And I'm Miguel. On this episode, we're going to talk about Katherine Jackson. Katherine Jackson. Betty Shabazz. <laughs> Tina Turner. Who else did she play? Reba Bernadine. Styles. Bernadine. Stella Payne. <laughs> All of those. And Valletta Wallace. Yes, Valletta Wallace. We're talking about Angela Bassett, one of the greatest actresses of all time. Meryl Streep wishes <laughs> that she could be Angela Bassett. <laughs> now, why did Meryl Streep <laughs> have to catch that stray? Because she was on my mind, so okay. she had to take it. <laughs> so we're talking about Angela Bassett on this episode. Are you ready to get into it? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Okay, so throughout this long and illustrious career that Angela Bassett has, do you remember where you first saw her? I'm going to say Boys in the Hood as okay. Trey's mama because I actually watched that, you know, around the time it actually came out. You can't watch that movie without remembering his mom. Yeah. So it's got to be that. <laughs> the spicy Reva Styles. Mm -hmm. Not taking no shit from <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne. Nope. Probably the same, just like with other people that we've done episodes on. Mm -hmm. There are things that they were in that I've seen before, but I just didn't remember them in it. For example, she was on A Man Called Hawk, and I loved that show when I was a kid. I have no idea what that is. He was a character on a show called Spencer for Hire. He helped Spencer with his detective activities and whatnot, and then he got his own spinoff show, mm -hmm. A Man Called Hawk, and apparently she was on that, but I don't remember her on that. <laughs> At all. But I first remember her playing Trey's mama and right. Furious's ex yes. in Boys in the Hood. And that would be my first real memory of Angela Bassett. Yeah. When I was looking at her IMDb, I saw a couple things that I probably would have seen her in. She was in one episode of The Cosby Show. Right. There was this 1990 TV show called Alien Nation that I used to love. I, I remember that. Did you watch that? I did. Oh, man. Just looking at the pictures now with the bald head. <laughs> oh, it looks so bad. I don't know how. I, <laughs> I didn't look. It reminds me of that SNL sketch when they had the cone heads. Right. They weren't as coney shaped, but it was bald <laughs> with like, it looked like giraffe print on it almost. Oh. But basically this show is about like aliens who had right. come to Earth. And yeah, I used to love this show. Yeah. We're being discriminated against. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to love that show, 1990s me. But yeah, apparently she was in one episode of that, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. It's funny because when we talked about doing Angela, kind of similar to B.D. Wong too, where it was one of those actors that we just remember. But then when we looked at their IMDb, it's like there's so many things yeah. we haven't seen them in. And I definitely haven't seen <laughs> half of the stuff that she's been in. Like you just know her for just being around. Yeah. And I think with her, <laughs> it's because she was in a lot of big projects like right out of the gate right so that's why it seems like True. her career has just been around forever because she came out on fire basically like that run from boys in the hood mm -hmm. through like how stella got her groove back and whatnot she was like the black actress in hollywood she did boys in the hood in 1991 then she played betty shabazz and malcolm x in 92 she played Catherine jackson mm -hmm. in 92 as well and then what's love yeah. got to do with it which we just rewatched today it's a hard watch in the sense that you know there was the violent scenes of course right. that's, i'm sure people know ike and tina did not have the best relationship so those scenes were hard to watch but overall it's really worth watching though i think so because she really captured tina turner like mm -hmm. down to the facial expressions the facial. and the movements and yes. whatnot because tina was in her 50s when this movie came out and i don't know how old angela was but she was significantly younger but i always remember when i was a kid thinking tina turner dances like a really old lady <laughs> <laughs> but now thinking about it, she wasn't that old when she was dancing like an old lady. So for uh, Angela to be probably in her 20s, <laughs> 20s or early 30s doing this old lady shuffle is pretty funny. Well, I remember actually seeing a video of them on set together and Tina was teaching her how to do her famous right. little strut slash shuffle. <laughs> so she had Tina there to right. make sure she got it right. Yeah, I read an interview where she said that Tina's choreographer was trying to teach Angela the steps. And mm -hmm. she's like, no, no, no. Let her learn it without the heels first. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. then we can move on to getting the heels done. Mm -hmm. That movie did make me rethink the lyrics to What's Love Got to Do With It? Because, you know, I was singing along at the end. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and I was like, you realize how bitter it is? Yeah, I'm like, love is a secondhand emotion. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> because <laughs> it doesn't sound 
Who needs a heart when a heart, heart can, can be, be broken? broken? I guess because it starts off and she's talking about like the touch of your hand makes my pulse react. So it sounds like <laughs> you're like, oh, I got this intense crush. And then she's like, meh. I don't need that shit. What's love got to do with it, though? <laughs> like, you just I'm come here over. for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> Give me what I need and get out. I don't just need your home. secondhand emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need you catching feelings or whatnot. I ain't here for that. I catch flights, not feelings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to actually look up the lyrics again, too, just to kind of <laughs> let it all sink in. That's funny. But here's another little tangent on the topic of Tina Turner. So I was like five when What's Love Got to Do With It came out, the actual song. And I still remember that video to this day with her strutting down the street with them heels and her little <laughs> leather skirt on. <laughs> and her denim jacket. And that spiky hair. So I would have loved to see Angela recreate that video for right. the movie, but it made more sense for them to do the live performance because then you can have the audience cheering right. and stuff. And it's like her big comeback, right? Yeah. So. And then, of course, you had to throw the real Tina in at the end yes. just to let you know I still got it <laughs> yep. I'm still here she still got them gams <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so I think even though I had seen her in these other movies I think that was the movie that really left an impact on me in terms of Angela Bassett's talent because she doesn't look like Tina Turner but she yeah. made herself look like Tina Turner <laughs> yeah. like I said the facial expressions the way she moved she became Tina Turner and I don't know much about Betty Shabazz mm -hmm. or Katherine Jackson. Maybe she did that with them as well. But, you know, we really didn't see them much. Right. Tina was a much more public figure mm -hmm. that we can look to her and say, OK, she captured it. Well, I still haven't watched Panther where she played Dr. Betty Shabazz. But a we... second time. Oh, yeah. Duh. And then she played in Malcolm X, which I yeah. had already mentioned. But we had talked about it when we did the Bokeem episode because he's in that movie, too, yeah. about how we wanted to rewatch Panther. And we still haven't done it. <laughs> What's funny, though, mm -hmm. is there's a movie called Coretta and Betty mm -hmm. or Betty and Coretta with her and Mary J. Blige. She doesn't play Betty for a third time. She plays Coretta. And Mary, Mary plays Betty. Is playing Betty. <laughs> They're like, let's let her switch it up. Yeah, <laughs> let's flip it up a little <laughs> bit. You've done it twice already. Well, as you were saying, this was her big run because after those movies was Waiting to Exhale and How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Yeah. Well, they were a couple of years in between, but during that time. But we rewatched Waiting to Exhale yesterday, day before. Yeah, day before. So, so this came out in 1995 and I remember loving the movie. So I know I've seen it a million times, but I, <laughs> I had only seen it the one time <laughs> until we watched it again. I know I've seen it a lot, but I know I hadn't seen it after turning 30 sometime at least. I'm not exactly right. sure the last time I watched it prior to this rewatch, but rewatching it again now that I'm older is completely different okay. <laughs> than when I was younger. I mean, I loved it when I was younger, but I think it just feels different. Now that I'm married, right. and like I have friends who have kids and are also married or like, even though they're the women in the, the movie are kind of in different stages of their lives. They are in their late thirties. I think it seems. Yeah. Early to late. 30s yeah. Because I believe Loretta Devine was like yeah. pushing 40 and Lila Rashawn's character was like 30. Yeah. So they were in the early to late thirties. So watching in your twenties, you know, you see the themes of like love, heartbreak and friendship and stuff, but just watching it again, just being pretty much their age in the movie just felt a lot different yeah. too. So I definitely enjoyed the rewatch. Yeah. The one that I want to watch again is the Jacksons in American dream. I haven't seen it since it first came out. So it's been what? 30 years. It came out in 1992. So almost 30 years. So I really want to watch that one again. I think I watched it, but I'm not sure it's possible. I watched it because it was a TV series. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that one I would like to watch again at some point. And I'm sure I'll get around to it. I want to watch How Stella Got a Groove Back again, too, even though Tay Diggs' accent is so bad. <laughs> but remember, we also brought this up again in another episode about Regina King when she played her sister. Yeah. So I would like to rewatch it because I think it'll be a fun one. Too. I think so. Just to see if it held up after all this time. Because <laughs> even just that scene with Regina. When she came back from yeah. vacation, she just that like, was pretty hey, funny. slut. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say I had good news? <laughs> oh, okay. It's just, it's so annoying that there's so many of these older movies that aren't available in Canada. <laughs> yeah. And we have to find creative ways to stream it 
or maybe even break down and buy it. Although surprisingly, <laughs> a lot of them have been on Disney, Disney Plus, Plus, which we just got, which is where How Stella Got a Groove Back is. Oh, What's is it? Love Got to Do with It, Waiting to Exhale. Those were all on Disney Plus. Okay, because I remember Waiting to Exhale was. So we can now watch How Stella Got a Groove. We can. Yay! It's on the list. I saw it when we were searching other stuff. It's funny because again, when we were talking about doing Angela Bassett, and I was looking up the stuff that I watched her in. I just realized there's this huge gap of the last time I saw her in something. So How Stella Got a Groove Back was 1998. And then Black Panther is 2018. So there's you couple, didn't see anything There's a in bunch between? of stuff in between, like Notorious is in there. We watched that. Which we watched. But we didn't watch that when it came out. We watched that later, didn't we? Yeah. So there's, there is stuff in between. But like those are the two things that I remember okay. when I look at her IMDb. So there's this huge... I'm surprised you Gap don't remember her on ER. I think I had stopped watching by okay. then because I did not watch the full series. So Okay. Yeah, I think it was the last season or the second to last season that she came on. Yeah, I think I was just in the, like, the first one or two seasons. Right. And I dipped out. Yeah, there's some things in between. Actually, no, I forgot. There's some things. I missed, I messed it up. So there was Hal Stella Girl grew back, and then American Horror Story. Okay. And then Black Panther. But even then, like, that's American still Horror about the same amount of yeah, time. Yeah, because American Horror Story, she first appeared in 2013. Right. So I shaved about five years off <laughs> the original gap that I thought. There's some things that I had seen her in in between, like the movie with Bernie Mac, Mr. 3000. I've seen some of Aquila and the Bee, not all of it. I've seen Notorious. We just watched Jumping the Broom. I watched ER. So I had seen things that she had been in. Uh, what else? Olympus has fallen and London has fallen. I haven't watched any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I would see her in things like that. But I really remember her from that fast start that she came right. out with where she was just in yeah. everything. I'm sure in between that, I was probably rewatching Waiting to Exhale and How Stella right. Got a Groove Back, which is probably why. It wasn't like, oh, where has she been? Yeah, I haven't you know? seen her in 30 years. <laughs> so it didn't feel like she made some kind of like comeback. Right. Like, I, oh, I forgot about her. Yeah. So it, for me, I didn't even realize there was that much of a gap between the stuff that I watched her in until just kind of looking at her IMDb. So with that said, what is your favorite performance of hers? Hmm. I would say Tina Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It. Pretty much what I said already was how she was able to turn herself into Tina Turner is very impressive. A lot of times when people are in biopics, they do kind of look like the person already, or at least they have like hair and makeup to, to make, make themselves them look, like, look like them. And even though she had the wigs and the... She still looked like Angela Bassett. Yeah, she looked very much like Angela <laughs> Bassett aesthetically. Yeah. The wigs and the, the styling and stuff couldn't really change that, but you could still see Tina. Yeah, it was the mannerisms yeah. and the way she moved. So I think that's really impressive to like turn yourself into someone without actually looking like them. <laughs> <laughs> And like I said, I can see that kind of role taking a lot out of you just because of the stuff that Tina went through. And so she played that character very well. And I feel like Tina was probably pleased with that. <laughs> yeah, I watched an interview with her maybe a year ago or mm -hmm. so. And they had on some super fans on the yeah. show. It was Good Morning America. And someone asked if she would want to do like an updated version mm -hmm. of What's Love Got to Do With It, focusing on Tina's career after that. And she's like, no. Because <laughs> she said physically that was the hardest thing that she's mm. ever had to do. Yeah. And she doesn't want to go through that again. <laughs> and you could see it, like yeah. you were saying, <laughs> the arms and yes. shoulders that she had. Mm -hmm. So she was built. She was. <laughs> so I see why she may not want to do that, even if it is for yeah. Tina Turner. Actually, let me rephrase that. I would say I consider that her best performance. Okay. But I think my personal favorite performance is her in American Horror Story. Which one? All of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have to kind of review them to compare them. Okay. Because I think she's kind of in this new stage in her life where she's like, just bad bitch. Right. <laughs> I mean, she always was, but it's kind of solidified now. So Which you... is the first episode of a black lady yes. sketch show was titled Angela Bassett is, is the, the baddest, baddest bitch. bitch. So it's kind of like, I mean, she always was. We know she is not going anywhere. And I think, you know how I was saying in the last episode when we talked about B.B. Wong, I was saying how the American Horror Story series, they have a way of making 
everything very aesthetically pleasing right. too. And I think that really like her being who she is and then being in these types of characters and these types of setups kind of brings that out right. even more. It's fun to see her playing all these different characters and stuff yeah. too. Which is why my favorite performance of mm -hmm. hers, even though she's been Academy Award nominated mm -hmm. she's won Golden Globes and all this other stuff, playing like real people like Tina Turner and right. Betty Shabazz. My favorite is something we watched a few months ago, Gunpowder Milkshake. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Because when you talk about being yeah. a badass, mm -hmm. she's like carrying people around after beating them up <laughs> with a hammer. Like yeah. sticking a hammer in this guy's mouth and dragging him across the yeah. room. <laughs> so if you haven't seen Gunpowder Milkshake, it's a popcorn movie. You're not going to watch it for the plot. Yeah. But it's a lot of action. And she's like the leader of this spy ring or something. And the character's name was Anna Mae, too, which I didn't catch until I was looking at the IMDb the other day. Yeah. But she is like we were saying, the bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, she takes no shit from anybody. Mm -hmm. She hates little kids, basically. <laughs> and, yeah, she's shooting guns, beating people up, and just kicking ass throughout the whole movie. So that's probably my favorite performance of hers outside of Black Lady Sketch Show okay. and that one sketch that she's in. <laughs> Called Angela Bassett is the baddest bitch. <laughs> is the baddest bitch, <laughs> where she's basically, like, <laughs> running Fashion Nova. And doing, like, tests on average bitches versus bad bitches. <laughs> this focus group that she's leading. So, yeah, that's going to be my favorite one. That just made me think of there was this glamorous life TikTok trend or something like that. Or, like, people were just making videos to uh, Sheila E's glamorous life. Okay. And then she made one with Sheila E. <laughs> that's funny. And it's like, hey, nobody's going to top this. No. <laughs> Not first if of you're all, putting Sheila in it. Yeah. Who's going to stop that? First of all, it's Angela Bassett. Yes. Second of all, Sheila E. The real Sheila E. Is yeah. In it with her, like, so shut it down after that. No one's going to top this one. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> that was pretty cute. Oh, just to circle back okay. to other things that I watched her in. I saw one episode of that 911 TV series, and it was wild. <laughs> so she plays a police officer. And in this episode, she finds out, or she found out, I guess, in a previous episode that her husband is gay. Okay. And so they're going through their drama. They got kids and she's mad at him because, well, now she's like, what am I supposed to do? What am I right. supposed to tell the kids and stuff? So she's got her personal drama. And then somebody flushed a newborn baby <laughs> down the toilet. I haven't watched this show <laughs> and I planned on watching it for some research purposes. Yeah. And I was looking at it. It was like, you know, I can't do this. It's a lot. So <laughs> There's too much going on They did on get here. the baby out, though, because they managed <laughs> to figure out what pipes this baby was flushed in and cut them out and saved it. But I was like, whoa, this show is a lot. Yeah. Everything <laughs> that I was seeing looking in the synopsis is like, OK, building explodes and mm -hmm. a cat flies onto the roof. Then a pigeon flies a plane into a building. <laughs> Just all sorts of outlandish shit. And it was yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to get back to this. But. <laughs> With that show, she is executive producer on that and the Texas spinoff, whatever it's called, 911 Texas, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> which makes her like the highest paid black television actress of all time. Okay. It's still not touching what other actresses well, are making on racism. Yes. <laughs> but she's, they don't have an exact number. Right. They just said north of 500,000 per episode. Okay. So she's got that going for her. Yeah. She has made it to a point where now she can make significant money. So I can appreciate that. Even <laughs> if the show looks silly and completely <laughs> ridiculous, I'm out here for her getting her coins. Yes. Well, with that being said, what do you consider is her under the radar performance? Under the radar performance. Hmm. I couldn't come up with anything. Okay. And I'm still looking at the list right now <laughs> because... A lot of the stuff that I've seen isn't onto the radar. Right. It's like big things. So I'm going to say one that I just watched a couple days ago. Maybe it was yesterday. Black Nativity. Okay. It's based off of a, a Langston Hughes play. And it's a movie starring her, Forrest Whitaker, Tyrese, Luke James, Jennifer Hudson. Huge ensemble cast. Right. And it's basically about Christmas. It's a story about Christmas. Uh, what's his name from The Shy? Jacob Lattimore when he was like 14 years old. <laughs> yep, with his little face. <laughs> it gets a little woozy <laughs> around the 45 minute mark for about 10 minutes. All right. But if you can power through that, it ended <laughs> up being a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Okay. 
because he falls asleep in church and the dream sequence is wild. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets a little crazy in there. But for the most part, it's a pretty entertaining movie. It's close to Christmas time. You can go ahead and check it out. Actually, when this episode comes out, Christmas is, I don't think, the following day. So uh, whatever. It's around Christmas when you're going to hear this. <laughs> so check out Black Nativity. It's got all the black people in it. Nas, Mary J. Blige. Check that out. It's cool. Okay. I'm choosing Boys in the Hood because her role is small. But at the beginning, when she's dropping Trey off as his daddies, she's younger because he's a kid. Right. Right. And you can see she kind of looks like a young mom. Right. But then when we see her later, she's got her little corporate job, it seems, (laughs) because her hair has changed. She's She's got got a new place. She's got a fancy place drinking wine on the couch. She's got a little blazer with the shoulder pads and stuff. So you kind of see this like transformation from her being a young mom to corporate lady. Yeah. And trying to figure out why her teenage son don't want to come hang out with her anymore. Because yeah. <laughs> he's a teenage boy and you're this lady. Yes. <laughs> he's trying to do things that you don't know about. Yeah. And his daddy's letting him get away with. Mm-hmm. And the things he wants to do is right around the corner. Yes. Across the street, actually. <laughs> yeah, across the street. So that's why he doesn't want to come hang out with you for the weekend. Yeah. So even though it's a small role, you got to see her be able to handle some transformation in the character. And you just kind of remember her. And completely different relationship between her and Lawrence Fishburne than they had in What's Love Got to Do With It. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like Even though they weren't together, they weren't beating they each were, other up. They were co-parenting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. That's my under the radar performance. Do you have a recommendation? Yes, I'm going to recommend that episode of a black lady sketch show. Mm -hmm. Angela Bassett is the baddest bitch. Not only for that sketch, Mm -hmm. but for that entire episode, because (laughs) it's utterly ridiculous. If you haven't watched the show, it's great writing (laughs) and it's hilarious. So check that out. I'm going to recommend Waiting to Exhale if you watched it when you were younger. Try watching it again now that you're a little older and see that. Kind of hits you a little different. Okay. (laughs) See if it feels a little different or if some of these things have happened to you now. Yeah. (laughs) Because there was a lot of different men that were in this movie that they had to deal and contend with. Yes. So I'm sure someone listening has had to deal with at least one of these types of Yeah, because it was four women in different stages of relationship status, yeah. I guess. And I think like five or six different men yeah. <laughs> that they had to deal with and a bunch of their issues. And different personality types yeah. too. So it's kind of your typical formula of four friends, but it was well-rounded and it didn't feel forced. Like you can understand why these women are friends, even right. though they're kind of all in sort of different stages and stuff. And none of them are assholes like the cast of Sex in the City. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you you would actually like these women. <laughs> and might actually want to hang out. Though. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that, though. <laughs> yeah. It's a side note, side tangent, whatever. It's watching Sex in the City a little bit older is also different for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do a, a recap after I'm done catching up. Okay. Since I've never seen it until recently and I'm on season three now. So we'll get back to it's you gonna guys. It's going to be a while. That. Yeah. So on that note, do you have anything else you want to say about Ms. Angela Bassett? I don't. I don't have anything that I haven't already said other than Angela Bassett is the baddest bitch. (laughs) You know what? When we way back when, when we talked about Regina King and I think you came to the realization that she's your favorite actress. Yeah. How would you stack her up against? Because now I'm just kind of thinking about Angela Bassett. See. If you had asked me this before we did the Regina King episode, (laughs) I would have said Angela Bassett because of all of the stuff early in her career. Right. Even the under the radar stuff, quote unquote, even though I didn't give this one to you. Vampire in Brooklyn with Eddie Murphy. (laughs) Ridiculous film, but Angela Bassett's in it. Right. What else have I seen her in? Mm -hmm. Contact. Supernova. So there's a lot of stuff that I've seen her in. So I would have said her. But. The thing that separates her from Regina King for me is a lot of the stuff that Regina King is doing now. Right. I was just about to say, I actually, this was not a good question because you can't really compare them. Right. Because Angela walked, so Regina could run maybe. (laughs) Yeah. Because at this point of Angela's career, she can do whatever she wants. Right. Like there's that movie with her that just came out on Netflix that I meant to watch Mm -hmm. where her and who is it? 
and two other random white women mm-hmm. and their sons forget about them on Mother's <laughs> oh, Day. Yeah. So they decide to go to New York City and live it up. Yeah. She can do those kind of movies now and not even care because she's Angela Bassett. <laughs> like she's not worried about ratings. She's not worried about getting paid because they're going to pay her to come out of the house. Right. <laughs> so she can just basically do whatever she wants. Yeah. Whereas right now, Regina King is just now starting to craft that part of her right. career where she's probably five years from now going to be doing those type of movies where eh, I guess I'll do this. Yeah. I know the director. I'll throw you a bone. <laughs> I'll let you put my name on this. So that's the difference for me. Yeah. I think the only reason why it popped up is just because I was just thinking about us going on and on about all these things that we love during. And then I was like, wait, who's your favorite actress still now? Now that <laughs> no, we've talked about this. <laughs> it, it's still Regina King. Okay. Because even though Angela Bassett has done some voiceovers and some cartoons, she hasn't done Huey and Riley. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's what is always going to be the deciding factor for me. Huey and Riley. All right. You're supposed to be in charge. You're supposed to be the leader. Lead us to some breakfast there, nigga. You cannot <laughs> top that. Oh, man. (laughs) All right. On that note. (laughs) On that note. I think we have expressed our love for Angela Bassett. We have. So I guess we could wrap it up here. Yeah, we can wrap this up. Uh, So if you haven't watched any Angela Bassett films recently or TV shows, go out and do that. We've given you a, a blueprint to work with. So go forth and watch some Angela Bassett. All right. So thank you for listening to us again. Uh, We appreciate all of the listens. Make sure to follow us on social media at Troy Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. You can check out our website, TroyPodcast.com. We have transcripts, links to things that we mentioned in the episodes. We have links to our playlists that accompany these episodes. So if you want to listen to some music, you can too. It's curated by me. Yay. And sometimes me. Sometimes Christina. She throws some in there too. <laughs> also, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe on your podcast service of choice if you haven't already done so. Also, tell a friend about this podcast because we want more people to listen to it because my ego is really, really small and I want it to be really, really big. Okay. (laughs) And with that said, we're out of here. See you in two weeks. Actually, we'll see you in 2022 because this is the last episode of 2021. It is. Our first full year of podcasting. So thank you for listening and coming back every two weeks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year and all that good stuff. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.